Hello there, I'm Pika. This is Untitled Figure Thing. Today I'm looking at photography in video games. I mean, why not? A long time ago, in the early 2000s, I played a game called Quake 3 Arena. It was an arena-based first-person shooter that I played every day for years. One of the cool things about the game was the automatic demo recording feature. It didn't output to a movie, but it did give you a file that you could use to replay a game in Quake 3 itself. So, for example, if you had a really fun match of Capture the Flag, you could then re-watch that game inside the Quake 3 engine. It didn't give you a movie, but it gave you something. What you could do with that was use some other tools and you could create a movie or take screenshots from that game. We were sharing gaming videos before it was cool. Fast forward to 2020 and there's all sorts of games with proper fully fleshed out photo modes with virtual cameras. Grand Theft Auto and Spider-Man both feature such photo modes. GTA even has a camera app on the main character's phone. Unknowingly, this camera app exports to a GTA web gallery and it's not the highest resolution possible. Using the PS4's built-in screenshot feature is the best way to approach take a photo. Both these games feature full day-night cycles as well and are beautiful to watch in action. The lighting will change during this time so you get softer, richer light at sunrise and sunset, the classic blue hour, or yeah, a couple of minutes anyway, and then nighttime. Being open world games, they give you the freedom to walk around like a normal person, except Spider-Man, where you're dressed as Spider-Man, so people will stop and want to take selfies with you. But on the whole, you can go where you want to. If you want to spend time walking the streets and taking photos, you can do that. Uh, you could do a photo essay on the suburban architecture of GTA 5, or, or even look at life in uh, New York during an outbreak, which was quite a shock when I loaded the game up during this pandemic, and everyone was wearing masks. I found Spider-Man's photo mode to beat that of GTA's virtual camera because the camera in Spider-Man was able to fly around and go where you wanted it. You weren't restricted to just looking through the lens. You could fly around a person and just put the camera where you wanted it. It was quite liberating to explore a scene that way. In GTA, I had an issue where I wanted to get closer and a woman called the cops on me. So that can be a thing. Spider-Man's photo mode also has the advantage of uh, full camera controls. I can adjust the exposure, the depth of field, and the zoom. GTA is basically a fully automatic camera with center-weighted focusing. It's okay, but in Spider-Man you can really be creative with the settings. Both games feature uh, filters, you know, like classic Instagram filters. They're okay. I kind of prefer to export as an unprocessed image and then tweak in Lightroom because the filters are a bit heavy handed in places. Overall, both games allow for some interesting ways to be creative with a virtual camera in a virtual world. No Man's Sky is a sci-fi exploration game set in a universe inspired by 1970s science fiction design. It's stunning. Alien worlds to look at from orbit and to explore from the ground. It has a full day-night cycle like GTA and Spider-Man and on some planets you can see some interesting Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis? It also has a photo mode but it's a bit strange in the options it gives you. You can sort of control the depth of field, but not the autofocus. It's like GTA in that it's center-weighted autofocus. There isn't any exposure control either, but you can tell the sun where to be in a photo, which affects the light and the time of day, so that's kind of cool. Overall, it's more about the filters and the composition. The results are super cool. You can move the camera almost anywhere, so you can go for close-up spaceship shots or super wide space scenes. It would be nice to have a bit more camera control, but it's fine. It's a beautiful game to take photos in. Really very stunning. And if you enjoy that aesthetic, then just get the game and have some fun. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is the first game I've played with an almost real camera in it. The camera controls are absolutely incredible. You can zoom, control the exposure, change the aperture, adjust the film grain, and there is a fantastic black and white feature. And you can even have focus peaking, which is astounding. What really sets it apart though is the ability to add a light. This allows you to control the environmental lighting with the exposure and then light a person for dramatic effect. The light works just like a real world one. 
If you put it far away, it's kind of soft and dim, but close up, it's bright and harsh. You only get one, but that's fine. I'm going to start a Jedi One Light photo workshop on Tatooine. It really does allow for some creative photography though. You can backlight someone or just add a bit of extra light to make it seem like it's coming from a window outside. All the normal photography tricks apply and work just fine. You can position the light to make it look like the lightsaber glow is stronger than it is. Or you can just kind of you know, do some dramatic lighting on the bad guy in the scene. It's just absolutely fantastic and... I mean, I think I've probably spent half the time playing the game just stopping to take photos and to put a light up and just kind of have some fun with that. It's just fantastic. I, I just love playing with this mode because it really makes me feel like a creative photographer again. And there's no social anxiety issues because my models are uh, computer game characters, so I don't have to kind of feel under pressure to do small talk. The photos have a, a sort of Leica Q quality to them. I think it's the shallow depth of field and the way that black and white looks. It just reminds me of the kind of photos that I would take in the real world. An absolute joy to, to play around with. Animal Crossing even has a full studio that you can go and play in. Oddly, the depth of field is dictated by the filter, so if you go for the filmic mode or the black and white, then you get some depth of field, but on the other filters, you don't. It's a bit strange that way. I think it would have been nice to be able to turn the depth of field on and off independently of the filters. Many racing games also have similar photo modes. Forza Horizon 4 has a really good mode with a lot of control to it. And an upcoming game called Ghosts of Shusima it looks to have an incredible photo mode, or you can even change the wind speed, direction, and the particle effects. I'd never heard of this game until I started looking into photo modes, and now I really want to play this game just to play around with this photo mode. It looks astounding. It's interesting to see what these games allow you to do. I've seen a few videos on, air uh, quotes, street photography in Grand Theft Auto. People are exploring the open world in these games in interesting, different ways. You could easily spend time doing a photo essay on the banal lives of non-playable characters. People get up to some strange things in that game that I've never seen before because I was too busy racing around in a stolen car. Is this photography? Is photography really photography when it's light hitting a digital sensor and not a chemical reaction? Does it really matter? Photography isn't even seen as art unless you need it to be seen as art, in which case, art. Free photography art wasn't real either. Okay, the materials were real, but the ideas were all made up. So I don't think it matters at all. They're all just forms of creative expression. That's good enough for me. It's closer to photography than painting is, for example, because you're constrained by the rules of the world you occupy. I just like the real world, I can only use what is around me. I can't add an inverted floating waterfall filled with M&Ms. I could if I was doing a painting, but I can't with a camera. I can only use the light in elements of the world around me. Even just in recent days, Adobe launched a Photoshop camera app that allows you to swap the sky out and replace it with balloons or fireworks or a starscape. So what is photography anymore? At the end of the day, I find these photo modes fascinating because they, just like real photography, they force you to take another look at the world around you. It forces you to slow down and to notice the little details in the world. When it's a virtual world, it really helps you appreciate just how much work has gone into making it feel alive. I'm really looking forward to exploring more photo modes and games and searching out interesting games just for that feature. Yeah, so thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.